What's up guys, Chris here with another quick update on the Glock 19. And uh, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I went ahead and installed the Garter slide lock lever. And I've noticed, um, well I guess it's one issue, but it's causing two. Well, it's one issue causing one problem. <laughs> so, I don't think we'll be, we might be able to see, yeah, I think you can see right there that the garter slide lock lever is slightly canting in the the cutout in the frame because it's just a hair narrower than the original one and that also causes this little offset in the slide to frame fit you can see here that we have about a quarter of a mil offset which also is represented at the front. It's a little bit more difficult to see. Let's see if we can line it up. You can see here that the slide edge is sticking out just a little bit. <clears throat> and the, um, the issue that this is causing is, if you saw my last video here, I did an update and I told you that the trigger had a tendency to pop forward real easy. So if I put a little bit of pressure at the back of the slide, well, of course it doesn't do it now. Let's see. Okay, I'll have to... Okay, there we go. So, <clears throat> the, the, tr the trigger is supposed to stay back once the gun is fired and it now pops up fairly easily. And I think that's in relation to the slightly looser fit of the slide lock and the offset here and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and take this down. So if we look at the, just the frame itself, let's fire this and if I just push slightly on the trigger bar at the back or let's see, if I put forward pressure nothing happens. I'm pushing this direction. However, if I push slightly down on it, the trigger pops out directly. So what's happening is due to the fact that the slide lock is a little bit uh, looser fit, the slide comes forward just a little bit and pushes on this back edge right here on the trigger bar. And that's what's causing the trigger to jump forward. And what's responsible for this in, in the slide, if we go ahead and reset, so we have the slide like this, and we flip it over, uh, the, what's now towards me in the camera frame is what's responsible for that locking action. So let's see, a little bit difficult to get light in there. Let's flip it around. Uh, not helping. Yeah, it is. There we go. So if you see right there, you can see there's a mark right on top of here. And this is actually slanted. Uh, let's move the light up. There we go. So you can see this slanted piece right here. That's where the trigger bar is resting in the fired position. But due to the slide being a little bit forward, the very back edge of this is pushing the trigger bar down so what you could do I don't see any mechanical reason for why you can't just file down this ridge so that it moves back a little bit and that should fix the trigger issue however I'm a little bit more concerned about the the um, <clears throat> fit of the slide lock lever in the blowback unit so it sits right in here now since that's steel and we have a bit of a loose fit that's going to increase the probability of the steel eating at the aluminum piece in the hop-up unit so two reasons um, why I'm going to go back to the stock slide lock lever number one it's a worse fit than the stock one. 
you can see right there it's I wouldn't call it well we don't have an, a slide install let's put that back So now with the slide installed, you can see that there's a little bit of room at the top left edge and in the bottom right, oh, I'm sorry, top right edge, right there, and a little bit on the bottom left. So uh, it's got a worse fit, worse finish, and I also think that it sticks out a little bit too much. I mean, it's basically turning this, this is a standard slide lock lever, but it's basically when installed, acting like an extended one. So what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> we're gonna put the, oh, well, this is the guarded packaging, but I have the original in here. We're going to put the original back and see what happens with the slide to frame gap and the trigger issue. should be a fairly quick operation. Let me grab a pin right here. Oh, I'm sorry, a, a uh, punch. Pop that out. And when you install the slide lock, you can tell that there's a ridge. It's slightly slanted towards uh, this side. See if I can make it more visible. You can see there's a little bit of slant on this end. And that's what you want going back towards you when holding the pistol. So let's actually, hmm, where's my calipers? Uh, one second, let me go grab those. All right, I'm back. So let's um, take a look here and see if I'm just imagining things or if there's actually a difference in thickness in these two. So original one, trying to get it in there as good as we can. And it's coming in at 2.33 millimeters in thickness. Garter one, it actually looks thicker just when looking at it, but no. You can see that it's not much, but this is 2.26. This was 2.33, so it is slightly thinner. So that's confirmed. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and pop this in. No, it's kind of difficult to do on camera here. Whoop. There we go, we got the original back, and let's see if we take a look. Well, I have to put the slime back on to make it fair. Hmm, okay. So number one, it's, we still have the same amount of gap pretty much, maybe just uh, hair less obviously but the offset in the slide is still there as you can see and same with the front sticking out and the trigger still pops out so okay um that was a bit of a bust. I was actually expecting the original one to be better. However, there is still a, in my opinion, when looking at it up close, a noticeable, well, marginal difference in fit. So, hmm, now I'm a bit torn. Actually, let's go ahead and put the 
card of one back since this didn't do what I thought it would do. So that's an interesting learning experience. Maybe, let's see. I hope I'm not being stupid here. Does the cut not go towards the back? Oh man. Could it be that I've actually installed this the wrong way? That would be embarrassing. If you look at the way that this looks, now we have the slant towards the left side here. And if you look at the cutout, in the hop-up unit it actually looks like it's supposed to go in there so that might be entirely my bad let's put this back together and see what happens so at least now you know that there's there is a right and a wrong way for the slide lock lever Well, now the, the trigger so it looks like we still have about the same offset possibly a tiny bit less not by much let's see how the gap looks still have a gap there and a gap there all right just to be fair, let's put the stock one back in. This was not the intention of this video. I actually thought I, my theory was sound from the beginning. So we're getting a little bit more than what was planned. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to do this off camera. It's a little bit fiddly. Get the angle and do it at the same time. Okay, stock one back in. Yeah, pretty much the same. But it does look like having it installed in the wrong direction gives you a slightly bigger gap, very, very marginal. Yeah, that looks that looks better. I mean, I'm not seeing as much light passing through right there. But the trigger still comes out really easily. So uh, I'm not going to switch it up again. I'll think about this and see what I want to do. Uh, next part about uh, in this video is that if you recall, I installed these three pieces here in the uh, the Glock 19. So we have the garter blowback nozzle, garter valve uh, set, and the garter piston head. Now, I thought that, excuse me, <clears throat> I thought for sure that installing these parts would give me at least maybe like 10 to 20 fps boost over the stock one due to the uh, fact that the piston head was showing and the uh, rocket valve was, was uh, a little bit poor fit however um well actually let me tell you the other thing i have a with the original fps test i had a nine ball hop up rubber and stock barrel this time I have a maple leaf hop-up rubber with the maple leaf uh, precision inner barrel. And now these components here. And chrono the exact same FPS. So we're still at 365 to 7. Oh, I'm sorry. 265 to 270 FPS with this installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick it up a notch and install this bad boy. The A plus 
Airsoft Technical Knockout System Upgrade Kit for WEG Series, which is an aluminum floating valve and a longer spring. So I'm not sure if I want to do that on camera or not. No, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be making a complete disassembly and reassembly video of this later on. But um, I'll try to take a look at the trigger uh, problem here and see if filing down that edge actually makes a difference. Because honestly, what happens is when this is um, fired, the, you know, nothing back here is going to affect the operations of the hammer assembly because the slide is not going any any more further. What happens is when the slide goes back, cocks the hammer. Well, first it it pushes the hammer out. Oh, I'm sorry, the trigger out. Cocks the hammer and pushes down the um, uh, what's it called valve reset knocker. So I don't think filing down that edge should be a problem. I'll try it out and uh, let you guys know. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Basically the conclusion here was that uh, things weren't the way that I thought they were. Apparently the Carter slide lock lever works just about as well as the stock one. Before I go, let's take a look, see if we can determine from the exploded view what direction the slide lock is actually supposed to be. Yeah, I think the doesn't show very well, but I do believe that the slanted edge should be towards the front according to the diagram. So that's my bad. Um, so now I know and you guys know and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay guys, I'm back. This was originally supposed to be <clears throat> excuse me, two uh, separate videos, but I decided to make it into one. Uh, I figured I've uploaded enough videos about this Glock anyway. Hmm. Got some discoloration here. Anyway, <clears throat> so what ended up happening was that I um well actually first of all let me tell you about the uh, slide lock and the trigger. Okay, so right now I have the stock WE slide lock installed and the uh, offset is a little bit less and what I did was, what I showed you earlier is that I just went ahead and filed down this edge right here a little bit and now that part doesn't cause the trigger to go forward anymore. <clears throat> So that's good. I like that. Now, so now we have a trigger that's staying back after it's been fired. Uh, the second thing that I did was that I installed the A plus uh, TKO system, which was the uh, spring and the valve. Uh, and I was expecting like, well. 285 to 300. I'm not sure. I, ha I had very high expectations for this. However, it clocked in at 275 FPS ish. So that's about 5 to 10 more than we got with the stock setup and that we got with the garter setup. So after testing this one, I went ahead and installed this thing right here the ESD valve what looks completely different and uh, I used the the garter stock valve spring that's in here right now 
and that gave me 265 FPS. So right now I switched back to the A plus TKO system because that's what gave me the most FPS. So right now what we have installed is the Garter Clock 18C nozzle, the uh, TKO spring uh, rocket valve, we have the Garter uh, rocket valve blocker, and we have the Garter piston head installed. So that combined now, uh, in combination with the maple leaf hop up, maple leaf uh, type bear, type bore barrel, um, gives me 275 FPS right now. So it looks like I'm actually surprised. I thought, you know, some combination of these upgrades would push me maybe 15 to 20 extra FPS, but it looks like that's kind of difficult to do. So. You know, it's a CQB pistol. I'm not sure what my motivation here is to try and get it to 300. I just wanted to, I guess that was my my uh, benchmark that I wanted to reach, but I'm not going to, so that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this pistol with uh, different fl uh, valve setups, you'll get 260 to 275, maybe 280, a little bit depending on, uh, you know, variables. So, but I'm really happy that I sorted out the barrel lock back. And let me just show you real quick. Like I told you before, I removed the auto uh, auto sear from the uh, lower. I have the ball bearing hammer wheel and I did the mod back here and it's still f functioning just fine in semi-auto just shooting one one shot at a time one thing that I noticed is and this was even before I I modified anything on this pistol if you look right here let me rack it I fire I keep the trigger all the way back not letting go and it won't reset properly when doing that. So if I push it all the way back, it just slips off. However, rack, fire, let go just a little bit to the normal resting position when it's fired, rack it, and it fires. Let me see if I can. So that's a little bit of a quirk. I'm not sure if that's the Glock 23 hammer internals or if that's WE Glock specific. Uh, I'll find that out when I get my um, Glock 19. So that's uh, that's it for this video. So um, right now the next up here is to wait for a WE Glock 19 as a host pistol so that way I can get rid of the um, full auto mechanism that's in here and I'll be able to have the gen 3 frame with the uh, the stippling and all of that that I've been talking about so that will probably be the next update for this pistol and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video